So there seems to be um, a few other rumors floating around about me and uh, because I know that um, these people watch my stuff, um, let's clear it up. So um, first of all, I was not fired from the IFC uh, because I dressed as um, Moana once. Um, my contract was for a year and then it was extended to a year and a half because they were able to get the funding, um, for that extra time. Uh, so that ended in April. Um, and you can tell that that's true because there has been no other post. I mean, you can ask anyone I work with, you can ask my boss. Um, there is no other sports program. It was a grant, uh, that was like a test grant. Um, and it was for two years, but because they didn't start it, like they didn't hire me until like a half a year in. That's why I was only there for a year and a half. Um, they actually extended the time. So that's why um, I am no longer working at the Indian Friendship Center is because my contract ended. Any of my clients knew that. I was. I told my clients that. I told um, uh, other partners we were working with that. So um, yeah, I was not fired for that. Um, and the Moana thing at the time, uh, there were like other princess companies uh, in the Sioux doing Moana. And I wanted to be that plus size you know, a uh, person and I didn't, um, you know, uh, offering that service for our birthday parties. And I just identified with Moana most. Um, and I didn't want to be a princess. Uh, you know, I wanted to be a strong, like, warrior figure like she was, um, you know, helping her community and connecting her community. And, um, identified with her and but you know when I did do my research on it there was conflicting views there was people who were um who, who didn't mind when people uh dressed up as her and then there are people who were so I put out um on my stories at the time like do y'all see um you know do, do people see like an, an issue with this um because you know, I did not want to do something that was uh, offensive and I got no f um, negative feedback. Everyone was like, oh, that would be like awesome. And of course, it wasn't um, coming from like Maori people. And so, you know, I know better to know now that it needs to be coming from that said community. So even though I had messaged three of my Indigenous friends and were like, hey, um, you know, do you think this is going to be an issue that I do this? Um, and they all said that they didn't see the issue in it again, because they had seen other people doing it. Um, they had seen people cosplaying, uh, in it as well. Um, like who were, who were white, um, or of other, um, races, um, and who weren't, um, Maori. And, um, so, you know, they had said like, seems fine to me. Um, but I know again now that um, even if it's one person like within said group that, you know, doesn't agree with that, um, that it, it, that's enough for me to not do it. And when I did do it, I tried to do it respectfully. Like, so I didn't order a costume like online from a mass producer, um, a, an elder um, woman made it. She was white, but like, I was like, in my head, I was like giving an elder like work. Um, I didn't use any cultural symbols, um, um, or like replicate anything. Um, didn't use any of the like, um, traditional like tattoos or like markings. So I was trying to do it in a way, um, that still allowed me to like, um, be a body, body positive, um, like representative, like in a market where you didn't see like plus size, um, people, uh, offering the service and where you saw like princess stuff a lot and like doing nails, like we were going to like do an obstacle course and like, yeah. So I was trying to do things, um, in a good way and I, and I didn't and I failed and I, you know, I shouldn't have done it. But, um, as soon as, uh, you know, someone brought up to me that it was like not right for me to be doing, I stopped doing it. Um, so the fact that this people continue to say that like, um, 
uh, that I'm problematic for that, even though like I've admitted um, that it was wrong and stopped doing it. And um, also uh, saying that I got fired from my job at the the Indigenous Friendship Centre because of it is completely um, false. Um, So yeah, just wanted to clear that up. Also, um, let's address uh, another rumor that um, saw floating around, which was that um, it was on a Suit Today article, and the reason that they don't uh, allow comments anymore, uh, it was after this article that um, when I complained about not being able to know who said thing, and uh, because they it was an act of defamation. Um, you know, they realized that having people who uh, can't associate their like actual name with um, these comments uh, was problematic and harmful. Um, this person had said that I, their child had come to youth group and that they were just a lesbian and that I was trying to convince them that they were trans, which I would never do. And so I can think of a few things that happen. Either their child, um, I asked them for their pronouns um, again, because oftentimes um, uh, pronouns would change. Um, so perhaps that was them perceiving that I was uh, assuming that they were trans. Um, I asked everyone their pronouns. I never assumed um, gender. Uh, And if I did ever make a mistake, um, you know, I I immediately corrected myself. Um, And so that or um, the child was uh, experimenting and tried to, um, you know, see what their parents' reaction was going to be. And when their parents did not react in the way that they wanted, blamed it on me, which, you know, is fine if that helped them to feel safe in the moment to say like what Katrina said I was, you know, like I don't put that past a youth, you know, doing that because, um, yeah, it's not always safe to, um, come out to everyone. Um, and, um, or, uh, like option C, uh, is that, uh, the, the parent just made this up because they knew that this is what, um, you know, would really crush me to uh, find out and to be putting out there um, because I would never do that. And the person who I think it is uh, who did that, um, when I look back at the messages of when their parent first messaged me, they said that their child was a lesbian. And then when um, the child was in programming, they chose to do... um, uh, like they identified like with trans symbols when they, um, you know, produced artwork. So, um, and I had an issue with this parent. So I think that this parent is now, um, continuing years later to try to, um, yeah make things up and and defame me. Um, And uh, there was a reason why I put up a boundary with this parent. Um, And I am allowed to do that when I am not being, um, when I do not feel safe uh, around others. And this parent had made multiple um, comments uh, online. And when we were um, like in settings together um, that I did not agree with and had made other friends of mine feel this way too. So um, yeah, uh, my feelings there were valid, and uh, this person continues to uh, just spread misinformation. Uh, um, and um, um, as well, shoot, what was I going to say? And I think it's important to um, remember, like, if you see these comments of like people saying that like the club is like not safe or they don't feel safe in this place, um, that there may be a reason why that is, like, why I have put up that um, boundary or or that I or we don't associate with them, whether it was me or someone else, like on our team who um, had a conflict or issue with them. Um, you know, uh, respect goes both ways and feeling safe goes both ways. So if this person is saying that they don't feel safe um, and you just believe that person, I think it would be really beneficial if you asked me how I feel about that person or what that person had done to me. Um, There's always two sides to every story. Um, And so just, you know, believing what you see online from one person's perspective is not giving, you know, um, us us a fair a fair chance um and is is not giving you the full story so um that's the other piece i guess i would say because um yeah just like announcing that we had new board members there's 
things like coming out um, about like holding me accountable for like not working well with community um, when, you know, these are a few people's accounts. Um, and yet there are, you know, a lot of other people who who have had good experiences and say that we have worked well. But again, you know, I give respect where it's given um, and I treat people well when I'm treated well. So um, and also not every organization is for everyone. And if these folks have an issue with how I'm doing things, um, one, in those moments, they could have helped or supported um, or offered suggestions. And that has never um, like happened in a in a positive or constructive constructive or helpful way. It's always just been uh, like judgments and uh, condemning um, and aggression. Um, and um, so, uh, yeah, um, you know, I encourage them to continue to do, you know, what they need to do to connect to community and create spaces where they feel safe. Uh, but I'm allowed to in the spaces that I'm creating to also feel safe in them. While we're at it, um, <laughs> Gosh. Um, also, yes, I recognize I'm missing an earring. Um, fell off in bed. Um, uh, also being said that um, I don't work well with a community or that I don't want to work with uh, social agencies. Um, certain social agencies have, um, like I've uh, reached out to, um, you know, in the beginning, like told, uh, you know, what, what the goal was. And, uh, you know, they said that they couldn't work with me until uh, we got nonprofit status. So again, to say that we just weren't working with them um, on purpose uh, was not true. Um, I was being told that they couldn't work with us until we had nonprofit status. Um, and then along the way, some of those social agencies tried to um, harvest um, like our participation list uh, and uh, or, or like programming um, without like offering any like uh, compensation or support to the club or facilitators, um, uh, which is a big no, no. Uh, anyone doing work deserves to be paid. Um, and so uh, if I wasn't working with someone and, um, you know, it was being said that, um, oh, like they want they want money. And like, so, you know, that's not ethical of them. Uh, everyone deserves payment for their work. And there are definitely moments where I um, volunteer and like there are appropriate moments like for that to, you know, give back to the community. But when we were in a are in a struggling position ourselves financially to keep up with expenses um, and, and programming costs and like want wanting to build our team so that our capacity is larger and we have more um, people contributing and also just to like get people paid, um, you know, is a goal of ours to be not compensated and to be expected to do work without compensation um, is, is not fair and, and nobody would be asked of that. But um, I, I was criticized for um, asking for compensation from certain agencies who do have consistent funding and lots of um, money and resources. Um, so yeah, that was another and, and also, um, you know, when we brought up about uh, doing wanting to do doing training and education, because we realized um, that a lot of people were misinformed. And because we were being asked to do so, uh, you know, when I said that we were going to do compensation training, there were some social workers who were like, well, people are uh, certified and paid to do this. And like, we're criticizing me for saying that we were going to do that when I don't have um, a degree in social work. Um, and I when I explained that, um, it, I wanted it to be a, like a collaboration, uh, and I wanted to find the resources, but we didn't have money to be able to pay people. So I wasn't in the spot to be able to do that. And, um, lived experience is valid enough for me to be able to have these conversations, um, and, and to be a speaker, um, with people but I shouldn't have called it competency training. And I learned that that was like the wrong thing that I did in that moment. But again, instead of these people saying like, I'm a social worker, I'd like to work with you and like offer my time for free. Like I was doing all of this work for free for four years. Um, uh, they did not do that. And they just like continued to criticize me and just like paint this picture of, of me like as, as this villain or as this person trying to inflict harm or not do things in, in proper ways. And that was not the case. I'm trying to build a grassroots organization in which there is no blueprint for and no one else doing it in this city. So it's quite hard to know what the right thing to do is. And so I've just continued to build partnerships with people who 
who who do support and who do make me feel good, but it doesn't happen overnight. And there's so many working parts that go into an organization that literally lead me to have like 10 hats to try to make everything still like stay stay alive and and come together there's so many things that go into um programming it what like we or i was doing was something that like four people could have been doing and so to be criticized that like we're not doing things like in a good safe way well that's because i was trying to do everything myself and why was i trying to do everything myself because i didn't have the money to compensate people so relying on volunteers is really hard if you've ever worked in a nonprofit um or like relying on volunteer work you know that it's not easy to have people stay consistent um uh, to, to offer their time, like valid reasons why, you know, they have their own things going on in their life. So uh, it's not easy. But again, to, you know, say that it's because I didn't want to work with people. Um, yeah, is is not true. And also, um, if there were people who, um, again, like wanted to work with us, but made me feel like said way, like I, I'm not obligated to continue to work with them if they don't make me feel good or, or if our values or energies don't align. And I don't ever wish harm upon these people. Um, you know, I encourage them to keep doing what they're doing because obviously there's going to be community members who more relate to them, but there's also community members who more relate to me. And it's okay that we have our own spaces and do, you know, our, our own thing. And last thing I'm going to bring up today, um, yeah, specifically around someone saying that they don't feel safe in my space. Um, this person, uh, made me feel unsafe telling me, uh, when I was trying to, when I was, uh, you know, saying that, uh, there was a gender affirming surgery that I wanted, um, that I felt would help with my dysphoria. Um, they, they had said like, what does this mean? Like, what does this mean? You know, I'm having people messaging me about this. And so to hear that other people that I knew in the past had, did not feel good about me, um, were talking about me. Um, and then I explained to them and I was like, wait, like, I don't need to explain myself, especially when a person, um, is like not coming at me, like in the most respectful way and is saying like, these people are asking me, so like, can you tell me like what this means? Um, yeah, I just like did not feel good after other times of them not making me feel good. And again, I wish this person well. And I think that they, you know, they have the capacity, um, and are doing, you know, great things, um, you know, with the people who identify with them. But again, because they, didn't make me feel safe. Now they don't feel safe coming into my space. But yeah, it, and that's okay. So like, create your own sa spaces and partnerships and programs and, and, and do that. But we're not all inherently going to feel safe in every space. That's why, you know, we switched to saying safer spaces, because there's going to be no space that everyone is going to feel safe in. And also, uh, not related, but related um, to, you know, a person who uh, wrote something online about us not um, being inclusive. Yeah, we we will be inclusive. But when things come up that are like anti racist or anti oppressive and or anti or, or, or transphobic or, or aren't, did I say that right? That aren't anti racist um, or aren't anti homophobic. Um, even if you weren't saying said things, but if you were posting from other people who have said certain things. And then when we bring it up um, and we say we need space um, to be able to like heal from those things happening and to be able to like move forward and moving forward means doing the work and, and education and training to like not be that way. If you refuse to do that, then yeah, we're not going to be inclusive to, to you anymore. So to put out this narrative that we're like saying we're inclusive, but we're not. Yeah. We're, we're inclusive to those whose values align. That's who we're inclusive to. And we're allowed to be inclusive to that. Again, if you have a problem with it, create your own spaces and like leave us alone, which is like what we do. I haven't spoken about it. I haven't written anything back. Again, uh, per advice from the lawyer, because these types of people, you just like don't know like what they could do and or say, and they name dropped people and these people that they name dropped uh, in harm's way by said community that they were supporting. So I've stayed quiet, but it just doesn't feel like I feel like I need to stick up for myself because I continue to hear these things go around. And I encourage you, if you hear something about me, message me and ask me about it. Ask me again how I feel about that person or what that person has done to me. 
because unless you're doing that, then you're not getting the full story.